Okay. Hi, everyone. It took us a little bit of time to get online, but here we are um, for May's Mystic uh, Monday. Well, actually, it's the end of April, but I do it at the end of every month to tell you what's going to happen in the next month. And May is going to be a big, big month. So I'm really excited to share lots of things, not only what's going on in the sky, but there's big things happening here at the parlor as well. So first of all, I'd like to thank everybody that came out for our last Sunday's spring sale. Um, a lot of my shelves got cleared, which was nice. It was an awesome day. And um, I will be doing another one uh, May 15th. So it's always a Sunday sometime once a month I'm going to try and do them so that you guys have time to kind of just shop, shop and browse and pop in at your leisure. Um, when I do them on Sundays, it's going to be from 11 to 4. Uh, so anytime that you feel like popping on by or picking up an order, I also do a live on Sundays when I'm in the parlor. Um, so it'll be May 15th at around 10 o'clock in the morning to show you what is available in the parlor. And I'm definitely going to do that because this last spring sale, a lot of you couldn't make it in on the Sunday, but you were ordering as soon as I got offline and I was putting things aside for people. So everybody's stuff is all set to go. Um, a couple of you stopped by today to pick up your orders. So thank you again for all of that. It was great. Um, and it really boosted my spirits too. Uh, so thank you for your support of my small business. Uh, so let me know also too for May 15th if there's anything you want to see on the shelves um, that maybe I haven't thought of or maybe I don't have in yet or whatever. Let me know. Put some suggestions down in the comments. I am right now negotiating um, some sales for tarot decks and oracle decks to be coming in. But like I said, if there's anything that you're looking for specifically, tell me in the comments and I will do my best to be able to supply it for you. Um, there's a shadow work course coming up that starts May 5th. Um, I don't know why I'm telling you this because it's full already and it sold out way back in March. But I do have a second one happening in June. It's, uh, it's got a few spots left still in it. Um, so if you want to do the shadow work course, you can sign up for June, uh, June's one. Please look under the events tab if you're looking for any of my events. I'm going to start trying to put events both on the page that we're on here, uh, Goddess Garage Tarot Parlor, but I'm also going to put them on my group. Um, Goddess Garage is just the name of the group. So go to either or, be a part of both, whatever you want to do, um, because I'll be putting events on both those pages. I'll be duplicating events. Um, because Facebook is sort of smushing down some people's events and stuff. So please do go to my events tab just to check and see what's going on. Because I know from just this last spring sale that I had on Sunday, a couple of people said I just kind of noticed it. It didn't pop up in my feed for me. So I'm not sure what Facebook is doing. Who knows what Facebook is doing. But please uh, try to make it a regular thing to check under my events tab because I've even had people say I would have gone to, you know, this course or this sale or whatever had I known about it. And I can't invite you. Um, for whatever reason, Facebook won't let me invite you. Uh, so you just kind of have to find it. And I share it. I try to share it. So help a girl out and check the events t tabs on a regular basis. I am having a full moon ceremony live. And that will be happening May 16th. So that'll be a Monday. So the May 15th uh, is the, the sale in May. Uh, May, So that's actually the first official night of the f full moon. Um, so I'll have some lovely treats that day in the, the parlor. But then on the 16th, we'll be doing the full moon ceremony live. Um, so if you come to the parlor, I'll give you a special little treat for the live ceremony the next night as well to use. Uh, and then uh, there's a new moon on May 30th. And I'm really excited that I'm going to be doing a YouTube thing on new moons. And this will be the first new moon, May 30th, that I'm going to be doing it on. It's a special crystal divination that it's, um, it's sort of like uh, crystal work and then divination combined into that and what it means for you. So it's going to be happening on YouTube. It'll be posted up there uh, for May 30th. So 
be sure to go to my YouTube channel, subscribe and ring the little fairy bell. That way, when that new moon crystal divination goes up, you'll be notified of when it's there and you can check it out and see what crystals working for you kind of thing. I also have another course happening. It will be starting Friday, May 28th will be the first class and it'll be pretty much all the Fridays in June for the most part. And it is called Star Magic. And I'm really excited to bring this course. I've been working on it for a while. Um, as you know, I do astrology and this is kind of an astrology 101 uh, kind of course, but it's more than just astrology. There will be that for sure, but you'll also be learning about star patterns and the stories in the skies. You'll be learning um, some of the history of it, some cloud divination, weather magic, um, weather signs and meanings, uh, star shamanism, and yes, there is such a thing as that, and also star magic rituals. There's a lot packed into this course. It's a thick, thick, heavy course, but it is a lot of fun, and it's the kind of magic you probably haven't seen before. So I'm really excited. I've been working on this particular course for over a year, getting it all together, and I'm really excited to finally bring it to you because a lot of people have said, oh, I'd love to be able to understand astrology. Now, astrology definitely is something you're not going to learn in a six-week course. You'll learn a lot of the basics. You'll probably know how to basically read your own chart kind of thing, and you'll understand what the chart is and what some of the meanings are. But astrology is a lifelong learning thing, and it's, it's definitely way more complicated than most divinations <laughs> so but it's so much fun once you get into it you just fall right down the rabbit hole um now we also have some new services coming in really excited to share this so this weekend um i was doing some demonstrations on people with my new tuning forks so i have new tuning forks and i'm doing sound therapy i am slowly getting in crystal um, chakra bowls. So uh, they're, they're beautiful. They vibrate in such a beautiful way. These things are very, very cool. I've demonstrated them on a few people who have come in and I am offering that up now as a service. And it's a whole chakra balancing and cleansing with the tuning forks and the singing bowls. Um, and you, you'll get a little crystal thing with it as well. So how this therapy works is that our bodies, as you know, are made up of a lot of water. We're, we're bags of water and meat, basically. <laughs> and um, water conducts sound, and that's why our body um, really responds to the moon, because the moon is able to wave the water and whatnot, and that's kind of how the tuning forks work as well. So our bodies resonate and respond to the sound. Um, and any sound therapy that we're using and it's very very effective um, and it's non-invasive and it's very gentle so sound actually resonates four times faster in water and thus this is the reason that it is a powerful tool for healing our bodies so what can it do so it relieves both physical and emotional pain doctors actually use these to help relieve pain but they also use them for testing hearing and and things like that it readjusts the body to balance um, on a cellular level. So it will move fluid around and flush fluid that needs to be flushed. It removes energy blocks as well. It helps to open energetic pathways. It relaxes mus muscle tension. I can attest to that personally. It eases stress and it's very good for anybody that suffers from anxiety on a regular because it helps to balance that uh, feeling of anxiety out it's uh, like I said it's non-invasive and it helps you get back in tune so to speak and what's even better is our bodies can help can't help but respond to the tuning forks and shift into a balanced pain-free state because our bodies want to be in balance but they just can't always get there that by themselves now the other things that these things do is they help aid in digestion um, it's a natural anti-inflammatory as well. It's been shown to increase bone density. So this is more on the doctor side, but you get this whether you, um, you know, you're doing it for clearing chakras or whether you're doing it for physical reasons. 
It also helps to speed healing of strained muscles and tendons and ligaments. It clears the chakras, like I said. It's great for improving sleep. It brings emotional balance. It brings clearer thinking and clarity of mind and more energy. And most sessions last about an hour or so. I get you up on the bed, clothes stay on, you don't have to get undressed or anything. Um, right, it, it, the regular price will be about $70 per session, but right now I'm doing it for the intro price of $45. And like I said, it lasts about an hour, but it's give, give, a, give or take a little bit, depending on the person uh, and what their needs are. Um, so some might be a little less an hour, some might be a little more, it depends. If you're a little less than an hour, that's good because it means you're healing. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, now we also have a new um, goddess coming in. So I'm very excited to share this. There will be appointments available on Saturdays for Reiki. So if you want to get some Reiki, Kayla is the, the lady's name who's going to be coming in and doing Reiki on Saturdays. Um, she will be here from about 10 until I think she said three or four in the afternoon. She'll be starting Saturday, May 14th. So I'm gonna be opening up the appointment book, um, but you can only book Reiki sessions with Kayla on Saturdays. Um, I'm here for Reiki sessions during the rest of the week and I don't do Saturdays. So don't try and book a, a tarot appointment because it won't happen. <laughs> um, and she has some really awesome prices for her Reiki because normally her Reiki is 30 minutes for $45, 60 minutes for 70, but she's doing intro and this is really good intro prices. She's doing 30 minutes for $25. I know, right? And she's doing 60 minutes for $40. So definitely show her some love, welcome her into our world of goddesses and uh, let her do some Reiki energy healing on you. Um, I'm doing a giveaway for a free sound therapy session. All you got to do is go to my YouTube channel and type in the comments in any video. doesn't matter what video you're watching on my channel. You can type in two things, one of two things. You can type in sound therapy. So I'll be doing a draw according to your YouTube name. So if you have another name you want me to call out, um, you know, like instead of cat's rule or whatever, um, you can put in brackets your actual name. Um, so sound therapy, you type that into any comment on any video on my channel, or you can type Lady Rose Rocks. <laughs> so that's the other thing you can type in as well. And your name will be entered and we will be doing the draw um, Monday, May 30th at um, live, because that's our Mystic Monday for May. Um, so there you have it. Um, that's all the stuff that's happening. And now we're going to get into the predictions and the sages because I have brought in, not sages, smudges, sorry. Um, I have brought in smudges and a lot of people have been asking me, what's the difference? And I have a ton of them. So I'm going to start with this one. You may be familiar with it. It's Palo Santo and Palo Santo actually literally um, translates to uh, holy wood and that's what it is it's a little piece of wood and it lights up and it smells amazing I love smelling this and it's sitting right on my desk so I've been smelling it all day long it's super super light and you use it in the same way that you would use a smudge you hold it about 45 degrees in a flame whether it's your light or your candle I would recommend lighting a candle and doing it from there because then you don't use as much juice from your lighter and then you just wave it around like you would a smudge and it's been used um, by shamans for ages uh, in South America that's where it's originally from and let me just get to it here here we go um, so it's actually used by the Incas and their medicine people it provides deep healing clearing energy it brings good fortune and luck as well it increases creativity and can help with fertility because of course the ultimate act of creation is bringing a baby into the world right so this actually really helps with fertility as well relieves the symptoms of headaches inflammation emotional trauma stress and it actually helps with colds as well so that's that's the holy wood um, covered there so now there's all kinds of different uh, smudges and sages you can get so the first one 
is the basic one, the white sage. And I have a ton of this in stock. Um, so the white sage is the one probably most of us are familiar with. Its purpose is to prepare people for ceremonies, teachings, and sweat lodges. It releases what is troubling your mind and to remove negative energy. It is used for cleansing homes and sacred items and people. Um, because of its antibacterial properties, and this has been proven scientifically, it is actually excellent at cleansing sick rooms. To, so if someone's been sick and they've been in bed, you know, for the last two weeks, go into that room, smudge it with the white sage, and it will help to um, get rid of any bacterial uh, and virus germs that are in the room. So there are different sages. So now I'm going to find, where did I put it? I wouldn't have let it go too far. There we go. So now we also have blue sage. So what's the difference between white sage and blue sage? Well, in the native community, blue sage is called grandmother sage. Um, so I've also put that on there. It can be used much in the same way as white sage, but it does have a different kind of kick to it. It's uh, used a lot, like I said, in the native community, and it's been used for thousands of years. Um, even before white sage was around, blue sage was around, and I think that might be part of the reason why it's called grandmother sage. Now, it does have a bit more of a kick to it, so it's a little more powerful and potent. Um, it helps to create a shield of protection around a space or a person, and, and it wards off negative feelings. So not only does it get rid of negative feelings, but it actually puts a shield up so negative feelings are kind of blocked or energies and that sort of thing. Um, especially, uh, it's especially good at rooting out the negative feelings that you're having a hard time to release. It helps release deep grudges as well. So if you're finding it hard to, you know, forgive someone or, or it's hanging on, it's great for heartbreak in that way too. Blue sage, grandmother sage is what you want. It's actually used in exorcisms of demons and unwanted spirits as well. I do keep blue sage in my house cleansing kit when I'm asked to come somewhere to cleanse a home. And I'm usually asked when there's something that's unwanted. <laughs> I'm never asked to just come because it's a new home. I'm always asked because there's something that's there that they don't want. <laughs> It's an excellent addition to any warding or unhexing spells as well. It's good in reverse spell magic if you want to reverse a spell. And it gives you spiritual strength because what gives you more spiritual strength than a grandmother? Now, there's something that's called black sage. It's also known as mugwort. So mugwort is another kind of smudge that you can use. I do warn people when they use mugwort or black sage, as it's sometimes called, that it does bring dreams. It brings very vivid, very powerful. Sarah's shaking her head. Yes, it does. <laughs> I have a few clients that are like probably at home going, yes, it does, because it brings very powerful dreams, prophetic dreams a lot of the times. Um, it brings big visions as well, because it has a little bit, it's not like, ayahuasca or anything like that it has a little bit of a hallucinogen kind of uh it, property to it um but it's smoke is one of introspection deep inner healing it is the smudge you want for shadow work um i thought about bringing this out in the last shadow work course uh i'm not going to do it in the shadow work courses because i don't want people driving home after having inhaled some of the smoke or whatever um because yeah <laughs> it just wouldn't be a good mix but i i'm hoping to bring some more mugwort i have a few uh smudges here but i'm hoping to bring uh little bags of mugwort for those that come to the shadow work course so that they can take it home and use it there and hopefully it will help with the shadow work that they're doing at that time it is best burned at night <laughs> and you should not drive after you you either burn it or you can also get mugwort tea it's often disguised as um vision tea or prophet tea or anything like that there it, that usually is code for there's mugwort in this tea um and that can be very potent as well um so like i said it's best burned at night or near bedtime um as it also actually provides a really good night's sleep uh it has protective qualities as it helps with 
protection during astral travel. So it's not protective in the sense that it gets rid of negative energies, but it helps to shield you if you're doing any kind of astral travel. And if you're having very powerful, vivid dreams, you're often doing a little bit of that um, or shamanic journeying. So I use this a lot when I'm doing my shamanic work, like soul retrieval or, or uh, spirit guide um, uh, connecting and that sort of thing. Now, there's also floral sage wands. So what's the difference between that? So there's one of my bigger mugwort ones. That's straight mugwort. So is this one. Um, so we've got lavender white sage here. So there's just a little bit of lavender mixed with that one. Um, we have a chakra one. And the chakra ones, they're very, very pretty. These are usually dyed rose petals because rose is a very popular thing to use and this one actually happens to be sweet grass as opposed to sage and we're going to talk about sweet grass as well so um roses are the queen of the flowers so it brings grace and strength when you're burning it and courage for self-love because it can be very courageous to learn to love yourself and to be okay with loving yourself and for self-healing it brings the clarity clarity to see the beauty in yourself in others and in your world. Um, so it really opens your eyes to that and it brings love and wisdom. That's what roses help to bring in. Now the lavender is actually considered one of the more magical flowers and it increases clairvoyance. It provides psychic protection, creates the energy of happiness, tranquility and peace. It calms the mind and of course it helps with sleep as we all know. Now sweet grass, so I have this sweet grass that has the rose petals with it. And I also have just straight up sweet grass. Actually, this one has a little bit of sage with it. So sweet grass, sage, and I'm going to talk about cedar are three of the four um, medicine, sacred medicines in the, the native circle of medicine. And what sweet grass does is I often say if you're going to smudge with sage, that's all great. It gets rid of the negativity, but without following it up with sweet grass, you're leaving a void or a bit of a vacuum and nature doesn't like that. And that vacuum is gonna be filled and it could be refilled with negativity or it could be refilled with happiness too. But without burning the sweet grass afterwards, you're kind of doing a 50-50, let's see what the dice say is gonna come in kind of thing. So when you follow up a sage smudging with sweet grass or with cedar as well, um, it brings profound healing and peace. In native cultures, we often leave sweet grass as offerings on the graves of our loved ones to help bring that peace and healing for them in the other life. It attracts positive energy, happiness, and positive spirit helpers. And that's another reason we leave it on the graves for um, positive spirits to help our, our loved ones get to the other side and cross the bridge successfully. Um, and some of the helpers could be angels or fairies or spirit guides, um, all kinds of good little things that could come in. And then we have cedar. So I do have cedar. There's a cedar smudge there. I have this is this one I've managed to um, get. I know the source. I know it's wild crafted. Um, it's uh, uh, sustainably wild crafted. I wild crafted myself my my own a couple of years ago, I think it was. Um, but now I've got a supplier that can do it for me. <laughs> so it saves me from going out in the woods. Um, although I do still like to go out there. Um, so cedar trees actually are seen as very old and very wise and extremely powerful spirits. They're actually one of the first trees to grow in a forest before the deep rooted ones can come like the maples and the oaks. And they're all wonderful, big, lovely trees but the cedars were there first and they were cultivating the land for the bigger boys to be able to come in. So cedar, like I said, is also one of the four sacred medicines. It actually brings the fastest cleansing of negative energy. So if you want something done really fast, bring cedar to do it because it does it like at lightning speed um, because it's used to doing it. It's, it's like an old trick for them to, for cedar to be able to cleanse a space. It's, it comes in going, yeah, okay, let's clear this. Um, where Sage kind of goes, okay, let's clear this area. <laughs> and that's sort of the attitude I'm picking up when I do a cedar cleanse as opposed to a smudge cleanse. 
but cedar also has a renewal um kind of energy about it gives you fresh starts and it's very very grounding um it also attracts good spirits along with angels and fairies and spirit guides and things like that in native culture it is used to carry prayers or intentions to the creator um it brings luck with money so cedar is very good if you're doing any kind of money work or luck work or spells or whatever it brings joy and helps ease personal transformation so if you're doing big personal transformation um, even with shadow work bring burn some cedar and it will help ease that transition because as humans we tend to resist change and transition even if we know it's good for us cedar helps to make the path a little bit smoother for you um, and it brings you into the now and that's why it's so good at uh, grounding because it does bring you to the now um, and then there's juniper I know I have some juniper around here somewhere I'm not sure where but it's here somewhere um, white sage no that's white sage okay it's buried in here somewhere but juniper is a guardian energy so it's a little bit different um, a lot of smudges will get rid of negativity maybe create a bit of a shield but juniper comes in and it's kind of like I compare it to the the German Shepherd it's kind of like a German Shepherd it's a guardian kind I remember going to some kind of safety with police uh, conference or talk for women or whatever and they actually suggest growing juniper bushes around any entryways or uh, windows that burglars could get into because juniper is really prickly and it, it's hard to get into a window when something's also like poking you and like hurting you so juniper is like that that's what juniper is it even as a plant itself it's a guardian plant it creates the energy of stable and safety it shifts the mood of a space clearing and creates a better flow for energy altogether. Um, it's excellent for offices or workspaces, especially if that workspace or office is toxic or there's toxic employee, employees or employers there. Or if you need to work as a team or a creative team, it's great to create that flow so that you can work better as a team and get that creative juice going. It's also great for artists of any kind. It encourages the creative flow again um, because it's all about, uh, you know, creating that flow. So if you're having a block, whether you're an artist, a writer, a musician, any kind of art form, Juniper is a great um, one to burn in your space to create that energy flow. And then we also have, and this is the last one, Dragon's Blood. So why do we want dragon's blood? So this is sage that is um, basically dipped and covered in dragon's blood powder. So dragon's blood is a resin. It's from a tree. Dragon's blood is usually the bark of a tree, um, a dragon blood tree. Um, and it is a booster. It's a very powerful booster. I also sell just dragon's blood on its own. And it adds potency to whatever it is paired with. So any spell that you do, it amplifies it in a huge way. So when you're smudging with it, it amplifies that smudge in a huge way. And it can be added to any one of these smudges. This one just comes with the smudge already added to it. Um, Dragon's Blood is also a guardian energy, much like the Juniper. It brings power, luck, love, courage, and restores balance in a big amplified way. Like if you want it to happen, boom, it's happening. Um, it brings clarity and clearer meditation when seeking answers to your life's bigger questions. So you could burn this while you're meditating. And like some of the bigger questions is like, what is my purpose? What are my gifts? Um, am I on the right path? What do I need to release? What direction should I be at going in or heading in? That sort of thing. Dragon's blood can help um, create the energy to be able to do that. Now, like I said, May is a big month. There's a lot of big things happening. I'm just going to wet my whistle a little bit. So it's full of big energy and it's just a matter of how are you going to use that? So there may be moments for some of you and some of you may be feeling it already 
because we're close to the end of April, that there's going to, it feels very chaotic. It feels like everything's coming at you at once. Um, maybe you're, you're feeling like every single ache that you could ever have is happening. Um, it's, it, that's the energy starting to ramp up that's coming in May. Now it's not going to feel that way the whole time. Sometimes the ramping up to energy is the more painful time. And then once it happens, it's like, Whoa, this is great. And it's free sailing from here kind of thing. Um, but used well in May, this could be a huge month of change, growth, and transformation. So I'm really happy we're doing a shadow work course in May. And of course that will help to dissipate or, uh, I mean, help to in be there. Like there's sort of residue happening in the June one as well. So for some of it, it, um, it may, for some of you, it may be a forced change. Um, cause you haven't been listening. <laughs> so if you haven't been listening, if you're getting the same tarot cards or the same Oracle cards or the same message, <laughs> Sarah's laughing already <laughs> because it might be a forced change for some of you. <laughs> so one of the big things that is happening is there an, is an alignment between Jupiter and Pluto happening. So Jupiter is all about power, expansion, growth, and Pluto is all about magic transformation, very powerful transformation. And Pluto is often misunderstood as he often comes around. He doesn't come to our neighborhood very often. He is not even considered a planet by the scientific community, but he is still considered a planet by the astrological committee, uh, community. And he has epic things that happen when he's around. So when big epic events happen, it, they're often tragic. So a lot of times he's seen as the planet of tragedy, but he's not because um, we tend to forget the good things he also brings in, but he always brings them in big. So for as a, for instance, he was in our ne neck of the woods at the beginning of World War One, at the beginning of World War II. Um, he was around in 2020 when COVID hit. Uh, the Berlin Wall came down though when he was around in our neck of the woods. So like I said, big shifts in humanity happen when Pluto is around and he's aligning with the biggest planet in our solar system. And our biggest planet is our one of growth, expansion. He's our planet of luck as well. Um, Pluto has the magic of very positive changes and Jupiter, like I said, is all about expansion and luck. And because they are both very powerful and they're slow moving, their alignments are a very big deal because they don't happen very often. They bring epic changes and extraordinary gifts. So get ready to put your wish out there. And I can't tell you just in the last few days, the number of people I've been getting them to draw cards and they keep getting a wish card. There's wish cards in various amounts of my decks and whatnot and a lot of people have been getting a wish card because they're supposed to be making a wish right now because it's going to come true because of pluto and jupiter coming together may is going to be an extraordinarily magical month now magic can go either way it can go dark or it can go light and it's up to us how we project out that magic and manifest that magic in our lives also added to this Jupiter um, shifting that's happening is Jupiter actually this month is changing signs. So it's a big deal when Jupiter changed signs because Jupiter's in a sign for about a, a year. Um, so it only happens once a year that it changes signs. And it's uh, again about expansion, luck, adventure, and all good things. Jupiter brings in good things. Um, so whenever he is in your, ch wherever he is in your chart, both natal and now means great things in those areas of your life for the next year. Um, so you want to know where your good luck is, where your biggest growth will be happening. Do you want to know where good things are going to happen for you? Get a Jupiter rising report. I have it on sale right now for $27 and you can find out where Jupiter is going to affect your life in a big, big way. And when you know where it's going to affect your life, you can focus on that part of your life as opposed to focusing on this. And it's like, well, how come the big luck isn't happening? 
because Jupiter's over here, not over here. So it's always good to know. I checked my chart to see where my Jupiter is, and I know big things are going to happen for me. Um, also, Jupiter's in my first house, <laughs> so it's all about me. <laughs> um, also added to this month's potent energy, the full moon is in is an eclipse moon and it's the last of our sort of what we call eclipse season um, for the next while so this full moon is actually going to have very intense energy so don't resist the energy you're going to feel it our hearts they've proven actually beat faster during a full moon that's why we get riled up so easily um, and we turn into crazy people sometimes <laughs> so let what needs to come in come in and what needs to be released let it go um, may 15th is the first night of the full moon as i've said repeatedly nothing happens just one and done it's three nights for that full moon may 15th is the first night of the full moon and it is in scorpio uh, so scorpios they are royalty when it comes to holding on to grudges <laughs> so this is a good time this is a good month just after the full moon is a great time to look to release um, any grudges that you have, to forgive those who have wronged you. Um, it's in that Scorpio energy. And like I said, they're really good at hanging on to grudges, but they're also really good at showing you what grudges you are hanging on to. Because sometimes we hang on to grudges and then we kind of forget we're hanging on to that. And um, But they love just as intensely. Their waters run very deep, Scorpio's waters do. So you'll find that this full moon is very intense emotionally. There'll be passion, there'll be lust, there'll be, you know, just cravings. So let those happen. Um, no, it's only going to last for three days, so you'll get through it. <laughs> Scorpio's also are not scared of going deep in the dark. They like darkness and power doesn't scare them either. Um, we all have Scorpio somewhere in our charts. Um, those of you that are sun sign Scorpio, like when you ask someone what their sign is and they say Scorpio, it means that's your sun sign. Um, but we all have Scorpio somewhere in our chart. So it's really good to know where your Scorpio is because that's the spot that can have big transformation. Because Scorpio tends to naturally rule the house of death. And it's like I said, it's waters run deep and very passionate very powerful not scared of the dark at all it loves it. yeah let's go do some shadow work it'll go deeper than you want to sometimes <laughs> um so i'm doing a shadow work course like i said this month and next month as well um so these next couple of months are the perfect time to do this kind of work and releasing and want to find out more about your shadow side and your grudges you may need to release that that you want to or may not realize you're holding on to them quite so tight uh, get a shadow reading along with a mini Scorpio report because um, I do shadow readings, but I can do a mini Scorpio report. Uh, Scorpio also reveals info um, about our love life side of things. Um, Scorpio shadow reading for May is only $45 and that includes the report. So you'll get a card reading with a report only $45. Super, super good deal. The end of May is a really good restart time as well. So the Scorpio moon, full moon is going to happen on the 15th. We're doing the live ceremony on the 16th. Then at the end of May, May 30th, um, it, like I said, it's the new moon. It's a great time for restart, doing something super special. Um, like I said, I talked about that crystal divination that I'm going to be posting up on YouTube. It's going to be great. Um, oh, also when I was talking about smudging, uh, I do have a video on my YouTube um, that hopefully we'll link if we haven't already done. already done. Okay, Sarah takes good care of me. <laughs> She's posted the, the video on smudging and how to do it ethically and respectfully to Mother Earth because a lot of people will take the whole smudge and light it like a cigar and that's not really what you're supposed to do unless you're doing ceremonial kind of stuff like big groups or when I do lives I often do it that way because it's ceremonial uh, you're really supposed to take see those little ties you're supposed to untie those and you're supposed to crumble it and burn this should this one smudge should last you about a year at least if you're smudging more than that you need me to come in and do a house cleansing because <laughs> you've got something else in there um, <laughs> 
so definitely uh, be sure to check out that video on our YouTube. Go and subscribe, ring the fairy bell, and you'll get notified whenever new videos go up. Uh, so I'm super excited to be able to share this crystal divination on this new moon in May. And if you need any smudge, now you know locally where to come and get it. Because a lot of people were like, oh, when are you going to carry smudge? So I'm carrying that. And also to let me know anything else that you're interested in getting um, locally here right in Kingston. Um, and especially with uh, tarot or oracle decks. If there's specific decks you're looking for, let me know. Because I know there's a few that are on order or back ordered, um, even from my suppliers. So if I can let them know what we need on our shelves then we can make this so much faster for everyone um so the free drawings before you get into the drawing card guys sarah Nguyen yes wanted to know there's her question um if the smudges are burned differently or are they all burned the same they're pretty much all burned the same like you would i tend to light a candle and then I put the smudge into the candle only because I don't want to use all my butane and my lighter or whatever. So they're all pretty much used, burn the same, except the only exception might be sweet grass because it can be kind of a pain to get lit. So often I tend to use sweet grass on charcoal. Um, so you can get out your shell or if you have a fireproof kind of container you can do a charcoal like if you have a little cauldron you can put the charcoal disc in there yes I will be carrying charcoal discs too I'm just waiting for them to come in <laughs> um, so I have burned charcoal in here as well um, you can see I've got all my leftover you know because I do do it loose when I'm just doing myself um, but what I do for this shell I would not put a charcoal disc right on the shell what I do is I put in sand or salt and then I put the charcoal disc down. I light the charcoal disc up. Charcoal is kind of fun to light because it has the sparks and the, the it looks like a little fairy dust happening. Um, and you only need to light one side. So you can get little tongs or you can just hold one side and light one side. That's all you need to do. You don't need to do the whole thing because once you put it down, it will kind of just become gray. And that's what you're looking for is the gray kind of uh, it's burned kind of charcoal. It's very hot. Um, so put the sweet grass on there and it will light up. And you can also put any other herbs there. Like some people will buy my herb mixtures and stuff or any other kind of um, smudge. You can also, you know, you can mix them up, right? Because this one right here that I use for circle most of the time is a combination of tobacco, cedar, sage, and um uh, sweet grass all together kind of thing. So the sweet grass does light in this bundle because the other things light so it forces the sweet grass to light up but sweet grass is the one sort of problematic child. Sweet grass must be the middle child. <laughs> Sorry the any minute middle children out there. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah it's the one that needs a little extra push so that's the charcoal then you want to use it if you're just burning sweet grass. There. Okay, so are we into card readings now? now? We're into card readings. Okay, and who do we have on our list? Uh, you didn't give me the list. I know. I did. Uh, no one made a donation this week, so or well, I guess we're only doing it once a month, so yeah. um, I don't have anyone seen as Sarah donated. Win. We'll do Sarah Wynn then. All right, we'll do Sarah Wynn because she's always top of the list, <laughs> and she placed a huge order. <laughs> after my live on Sunday. <laughs> I was apologizing to people because I was like, yeah, that's already been sold. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Sarah Wynn, let's see what you've got in making magic. Oh, you've got the triple spiral. So it says, listen to divine wisdom and joyfully learning life's lessons. So you're going to find that May is very much a spiral month for you. You're going to feel like you're coming back around to something again and again and again. But if you're doing it right, you're coming back around and you, you know more than you did the last time when you encounter this. Now, you're good at doing things again and again because I know you're doing a hundred different portraits of people in Belleville because um, she's doing the hundred day challenge or the hundred pro, uh, painting challenge. Um, she's an artiste. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So she, she's 
she's very disciplined. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's a lot of painting. Um, so she's, she's very disciplined and she gets those paintings done. One of the hardest working artists I've ever seen, actually. <laughs> um, all right. Let me, I'm flipping these cards around on myself. All right. So let's, uh, let's do a woods one. Cause I know Sarah likes the woods. She goes out in the woods a lot. So let's draw a woods card for her. Cause she's usually one of my biggest supporters. <laughs> All right, Sarah, let's see what you get in the woods here. You got music. Okay. Let me see what this says. Sarah, there is a melody to be heard in the deepest part of the woods. If we only listen. So when you go out into the woods, pay attention to the song that's playing um, for you because they are singing for you. And that is where you will probably find um, some, some inspiration. She's already typed at me that she will be making a donation. So you get a door too. <laughs> Let's see what door you're gonna go through. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Because I know, like, we've changed around to only doing it once a month. So I think some people have fallen out of the, the routine. Because I changed the routine. <laughs> All right, Sarah. Here's your door. And what it says is forgive and forget. A ritual cleaning of pain and, of pain and lies. Arise and awaken. See a new sunrise. So there's some forgiveness that's needed. You walk through that door and you're out into the sun. You need to do some cleansing, a ritual cleansing, and then the sunrise will come for you. So that's that's good signs so far. So I like that. If you want a free card, let us know um, in the comments because I don't see the comments. Sarah does. She knows not to let me see the comments because I get distracted. <laughs> So anyone who said hello, hello, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much. <laughs> I do read all the comments after I'm done the broadcast, but otherwise I, I get too easily distracted. So Sarah keeps me away from the comments. <laughs> uh, anyone else? No. Okay. No, no one's saying that they want to take a big donation. Okay. And I'll just double check and make sure. Um, on my thing to see if uh, doo -doo -doo. we've got Ladybug Cleaner is a new subscriber on Hi. our uh... Thank you. <laughs> oh Michelle Lynn just sent a donation so that's good Perfect. I just had Ladybug Cleaners into my place they did a fantastic job by the way <laughs> Okay, Patricia Lynn will, uh, Patty will do a, a card. She was just in here. Um, so Michelle Lynn uh, is going to do a donation. So I have to do all three cards here. So Michelle, what's your magic? First of all, you've got the tree of life, true wisdom and making good choices in life. So when this uh, tree of life pops up, I often recommend that there's um, some sort of introvert meditation that needs to happen so a, a not guided meditation guided meditation definitely has its place but this is not the kind of meditation i'm recommending i'm recommending just sitting with your thoughts letting them flow in and flow out and one breath in and one breath fully out on purpose mindfully done is a meditation and it's in that breathing on purpose mindfully that we suddenly get thoughts that pop into our head. And that's why people who say, I can't stop thinking. Well, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to keep thinking. The idea of the breathing is to cleanse those thoughts. Like, I need to get pork chops out of the freezer for dinner tonight. And I've got a load of laundry to put in. The breathing so hopefully cleanses that out. So that the thoughts that come in are answers to some of our questions or some of our situations. Because um, we always have the answers within. It's just a matter of slowing down and listening and really being aware of uh, providing the space for them to come in. Now, your walk in the woods is to teach, inspire others, and let nature be your greatest teacher. So again, tree of life, 
meditation, go out in nature, meditate, see what comes. Um, something my mother would make us do as kids is she would take us out into the woods. She was my native side and she would make us sit very still. She was very big, big, huge, big on learning to be still. And when you're still out in the woods, animals tend to come a little closer to you and you experience nature on a deeper level somehow. And that's what my mom would make us do. We would sit out in the woods and um, at, at the time we felt it was a little bit punishing, but um, <laughs> it, it does pay off and I do appreciate that she did that and made us aware of it because it's amazing what you learn by watching where the wind blows and watching what animals will do climbing up that tree or rustling around in the leaves or whatever it might be. Um, so now you need to go out into the woods and be still for a few and see what happens for you. Okay, so this is your doorway, Michelle, and you have birth. Another gateway appears in view. New life is unfolding with blessings to you. Now, there's not really much to see on the other side. This is the actual picture. So you're birthing something in May, a new idea, a new, uh, you know, situation, a new energy, whatever it might be. So definitely use this energy because it will be hugely powerful for you because that's what Jupiter is all about, that expansion. Pluto's about that transformation that is coming for you. And this new moon that's coming on May 30th will be extremely powerful for you. It will be the one of the biggest restarts you've had in your life. So get ready for it and take advantage of it. Um, and then, who did I say? Patty. Patty wanted a card. Okay. And she said she was going to send it in her donation. So okay. Please. All right. Oh, Patty, you got fairy magic. I love this. And you've got this labyrinth. Um, and I know exactly how to draw that labyrinth. There's a formula for it. Respectfully work with the fairies and the elements to achieve your goal. Now, Patty's kind of always reminded me of a little fairy because she has such spunk and such energy. <laughs> and she's always laughing. I love it. <laughs> so fairy magic is where your magic is. And May is the month of the fairies. The veil thins in May because it's the opposite of October, right? In October, the veil thins and we're able to get in touch with our ancestors. In May, the veil thins and we're able to enter the fairy world a little easier. And this is when the fairies really come into our world as well. Oh, and of course, you're doing the favorite thing that fairies love to do. It says to dance. That's your whispering in the woods uh, card. And it says, allow yourself some fun each day, just as the sun dances with the moon every night. So dance. And like I said, that's the, one of the most favorite activities of the fairies. Um, so do your dance and I know you're good at it. And here's your jumper. Okay, so here's your door. It even looks like a little fairy door. You got a whole fairy theme happening, Patty. <laughs> so this door is the Odyssey. Take in the beauty of country lands and botany. Explore the wonder like a gypsy traveler's Odyssey. Ooh, I love it. So big, powerful things are coming for you in a very magical way. So look for the magic because it's there for you. That's awesome. I love it. Um, who else? Uh, we have been lots of chat tonight. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Julie needs to read. Okay. Okay, Julie. We can do Julie for sure. Oh, there's your card. Okay. Julie, you got triple moon. Ooh. Embracing all aspects of yourself, the divine and the earthly and ex 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 accepting all aspects as well as the the maiden mother and the crone beautiful in each of their own ways in each of their stages unfortunately society tends to favor the maiden but the mother is beautiful um i've got i had some mother statues earth mother statues they've all been sold but they're gorgeous i was going to show them tonight but i have none to show you but i have some more on the way so that's good and then the crone Crones are the most beautiful. Our elders are our most beautiful. Um, such grace and such wisdom. Uh, 
comes with the crone stage. I love that stage, even though there's hot flashes in it. <laughs> uh, anyone else? No one else that I see. Um, did you mind? And then some replay cards. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. All right. That's it for okay. That's true. I just looked up. And I was like, oh, it's eight o'clock. Okay, Sarah, you got self confidence, strong self belief, and sense of worth. And it's interesting because this dot is going like in all directions. And I think you've been feeling that. <laughs> no <kidding. laughs> or they're really pokey things, which is also something that's been <laughs> happening. <laughs> so let's see where this self-confidence goes to. Oh, okay. There's your woods. Growth. The tallest oak tree once started as a seedling or a little oak or a little, uh, what do you call them? Acorn. <laughs> Don't be afraid to start something new. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just showing Sarah. No one can see but Sarah. <laughs> oh, all right. And there's your car. There's your door. Well, actually, there's two popped out. Which one do you want? Okay. A note on love. Seek different seasons and enter into the unknown. When love is in focus, foundation and goal blessed is the body mind and soul when love is the focus foundation and goal blessed is the body mind and soul so i know i'm like wow oh, wow and when i was looking because i can see them right yeah. i was like pick this one pick this one <laughs> but i didn't want to <laughs> influence that <laughs> you went for the right one anyways <laughs> okay so now for the replay card let's see what magic is coming for everyone in May. Oh, that one jumped right out. Okay, a win. Three rays of light, balancing male and female energies, peace and harmony, which is something we definitely need more of on this planet. So that's what can happen if we use the energy right. Peace and harmony, the balancing of the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies. We need both. There we go. Um, Patricia says she feels great after whatever you did to her today. Oh, yes. I did some tuning fork work with her today. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie, I'm starting to feel a lot better after mine, too. Oh, good. And Sarah wanted to know, is that the three spiral sign attached to the playa that you read for her? Oh, yes. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that totally is what that is. The three spiral sign um, attached to Freya. It's also, I think, sometimes called a Celtic spiral, a Celtic knot, or something like that as well. But yeah, it's definitely all about like it's the goddess symbol in three, right? So maiden, mother, crone, because the goddess symbol itself is the spiral. Because feminine, divine feminine, knows that energy is not a linear thing; it's a roundabout thing. That's why the universe goes in a roundabout way. That's why we spin around the sun. That's why the universe is spiraling outwards, always growing, but it's always in a spiral way because that is where the real energy of growth lies. So look for the spirals and ingest the goddess energy. You can do it with any spiral food. My favorite is cinnamon buns. <laughs> I always use that excuse. I just need some more goddess energy. <laughs> but that's the end of our night tonight. So thank you so much for being here. I loved all the chatter. I will be reading all the comments. So if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you for those of you that subscribe. Thank you, Ladybug Cleaners, um, because I saw them pop up on my phone here um, as a new subscriber. So that's amazing. And thank you so much message me if you want to get in touch with me if you want to book anything i would love love to have you in the parlor and don't forget to put your comments on youtube and this video will be up probably around this time tomorrow yeah so check us out on youtube okay bye